children. Did you know that when Jesus died on the cross, his work did not end? That's right. After Jesus resurrected, he turned to heaven to work in the heavenly sanctuary. In 1844, he moved from the holy place to the most holy place. This is where Jesus listens to our prayers and advocates for us or defends us from Satan's accusations. When we confess our sins, this is where Jesus asks the Father to forgive us. Even though Jesus has been working in the heavenly sanctuary for more than 2,000 years, he will not stay there forever. One day, he will leave the sanctuary and come to earth to gather his people. If we want to live with him, we must be ready when he comes. To better understand this, I want to give you an example. Let's suppose that a mother must run some errands in town. She leaves her oldest child, Anna, at home with her three younger brothers and a list of chores. They must clean and tidy up the whole house, wash the dishes, make the beds, sweep or vacuum the floors, dust the furniture, fold the laundry, and put away all the toys. Everything must be done before mom returns. Just before leaving, mom turns on the security cameras inside the house. She also promises that if they finish all the chores, on the list, she will take them to their favorite vacation place. Anna starts to ask when mom will return, but mom leaves before Anna can speak. What do you think will happen? Let's look at the possible outcomes. Number one, mom arrives home to find everything a mess and nothing completed from the list of chores. Even worse, when she watches the security videos, she sees that Anna spent all her time on her phone while her brothers played. Two of the boys fought and one hit his brother over the head with a plastic truck. Mom is very sad and does not take the children on the vacation trip. The second possibility is that mom arrives home to find that some of the chores have been completed. The dishes are washed, the dirty clothes have been put in the hamper, and the floors are swept. But when mom finds dirty socks under Anna's bed, leftover food in the oven, and a garbage behind the furniture, the trip is canceled. The third possibility is that mom arrives home at a time when she isn't expected. Right away, she sees that all the children have worked hard and everything is clean and tidy. She looks under the beds, in the kitchen, and behind the couches, but finds nothing out of order. When she watches the videos, she sees that all the children work together happily, and then she notices something else. Beside the front door, four suitcases are lined up in neat rows, all packed and ready to go. Pleased, she turns to her children and with a big smile says, My dear sweet children, as soon as Daddy comes home, we will go on our trip. You might be wondering, why am I telling you this story? Right now, Jesus is doing a special work in the most holy place. It's called the work of atonement and is similar to what happened in our story. The holy angels are like that camera that recorded everything that happened while mom was away. In the same way, the angels record or write down everything we do or say. If you tell a lie, if you steal something, if you speak badly of someone, it all gets written in heaven's record books. Then the Holy Spirit speaks to our conscience and helps us see that we have done wrong. To erase our sins from the record books, we must confess and ask God for his forgiveness through Jesus. We must also apologize to the person we have hurt. Jesus has been reviewing the records in the most holy since 1844. Just as Anna and her brothers couldn't hide their mess from mom, we cannot hide anything from Jesus. And just as mom checked the whole house carefully, Jesus is carefully checking every name. He is looking to see if we have confessed and overcome all our sins. Even one unconfessed sin next to our names will keep us out of heaven. This may sound difficult, but don't worry. God is 
Almighty, and if necessary, he will send the whole army of heaven to help us overcome every sin and win against every temptation. Since Jesus began his work long before any of us were born, his work will soon be finished. Therefore, we must work quickly to complete the tasks he has given us to do before he returns. What must we do? We must cleanse our minds and hearts from every evil and become perfect, just as Jesus is perfect. We must serve the people around us with love, even when those people are not nice to us. We must teach others about Jesus so they can know him too. As the books of record are opened in the judgment, the lives of all who have believed on Jesus come in review before him. Beginning with those who first lived upon the earth, our advocate prevents the cases of each successive generation and closes with the living. Every name is mentioned, every case closely investigated. Names are accepted, names are rejected. When any have sinned, and those sins remain on the books of the record, unrepented and unforgiven, their names will be blotted out of the book of life, and the record of their good deeds will be erased from the book of God's remembrance. When Jesus finishes reviewing all the records in the Most Holy, he will leave his work as the high priest of the sanctuary, take off his priestly robes, and change into his royal robes to come to earth as king. This time between when Jesus leaves the sanctuary and when he comes in the clouds of heaven is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It is a short time when God's people must live without an intercessor or someone who defends those who are accused of doing something wrong. When Jacob tricked Esau into giving up his birthright, Jacob committed a terrible sin. Although he confessed his sins with tears, he could not escape the consequences. He had to leave home to escape the anger of his brother, and he had never got to see his mother again. Finally, when Jacob learned that Esau was coming to kill Jacob and his family, he prayed to God and begged for mercy. If Jacob had not confessed his sin long before, God would not have saved Jacob. The time of trouble is a time of struggle like Jacob's struggle that night. God's people know they have done wrong things. They know they are not worthy of salvation, but because all their sins have already been confessed and their minds and hearts truly are clean, they cannot remember any of their sins. Like Jacob, they can only plead with tears for God's mercy. The Bible tells us that the that this time of trouble will be worse than anything we have ever seen before. Do you remember how difficult the COVID-19 pandemic was? We were afraid of that virus. We were afraid for our families. We were afraid of going out on the streets because of the protests and violence. We were worried because the stores didn't have enough food. But this time of trouble will be much worse than anything we can ever imagine. However, we shouldn't worry or be afraid. God has promised to send his angels to help his people. In the time of trouble, just before the coming of Jesus, the righteous will be preserved through the ministration of heavenly angels. Today, dear children, we must not waste any time in preparing for Christ's return. Just like in the story about the mom at the beginning of this reading, Jesus wants us to take with him a wonderful journey to heaven. But first, we must complete the tasks he has given us. How can we do this? By studying God's promises, obeying his word, being faithful to his commandments, and doing everything he has asked of us. If you confess every sin written beside your name in the record books, then... When Jesus comes, he will take you with him to heaven, where there will be no more pain and death. Heaven is a beautiful place filled with the tallest green trees and the brightest flowers. There we will meet God face to face, sing with the angels, talk with friends and loved ones, and snuggle with animals that were once wild on this earth. I want to be there, don't you?